Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 32. So this tutorial is going to be kind of an end of an arc of what we've done so far. Keep in mind though that this is just going to be the beginning of our future development. So we're going to basically tidy up our hierarchy a little bit. We're going to add in a cave entrance and we'll also add in a couple of little sound effects for our sword and the gates and you know just to give it a bit more, not realism, but something extra to the game. And don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series still to come. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So we are on tutorial number 32 now, and we've done quite a bit. But things start getting better from here on in, because as of next tutorial, we're going to make it look even better before we start moving on to uh, creating a, a bigger, better world with different places. So we're just going to kind of get things into place to advance to that point. So with that, let's take a look at actually bringing in a cave section. Now, it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, what I've done is I've gone to the asset store and I've chosen a specific asset that you can use if you want. And as always, it's free. So just download it if you want. And it is known as Rocky Hills. Uh, you may have seen this one before. So we want free only, obviously. And this one right here. And obviously I've had nothing, no input, nothing with this. Uh, this is something I've chosen personally because I like it. I like how it looks. I like everything about this little pack. Um, if you want to check out this creator a little more, please do. Uh, so yeah, I have chosen this. So you just need to click import, download, whatever, if you're choosing that. The reason I've chosen this is because we are going for a cave as our next uh, area. And that's going to be like a dungeon with puzzles and all kinds of stuff. So all we need to do is when we have it, it is down here. Toby Fredson, obviously the creator, uh, Rocky Hills, and we have prefabs. And right there we have a cave prefab. So I'm going to go over to the area where I would want our cave to be, which is going to be over here somewhere, I think, over this side. So the idea is, you know, we do our quest, we do whatever we need to. Once we've killed the spider, we can go into our cave, which is going to be, let's have it right here. So drag and drop that asset onto your scene let's rotate like so and what i intend to do is although it looks a little bit odd at the moment the reason for this is simply because of again it's the style of cave that it's going for it looks like it is empty but that is something we will deal with so let's bring it down just a little more to about there and it's going to look like it's dark inside when we get around to it, but we're going to have a special effect for that to happen. So we will do that eventually. So this is our cave ready. And obviously you can now take the time and design around the cave, you know, like we did here with the terrain. So I may take just a second here and increase the terrain a little bit. So we've got some kind of, uh, you know, it doesn't look plain, barren, boring, whatever. Let's uh, paint it a little bit here. I'm not going to do too much of this because I'm not going to teach you how to do a terrain all over again. I just want to give you the idea of where we're going here. So let's raise that terrain. Let's raise it here. And oops, that's a little bit too much, the opacity there. Uh, just, yeah, raise it up. See, so you can see what I'm doing. I may do a little bit more of this in the meantime before the next tutorial. Yeah, you can see what I'm going for. So what do we need to do now? Well, I did say we want to tidy up the hierarchy a little bit because if you've noticed, our hierarchy is a little bit messy. So I think it'd be wise to kind of group a couple of things together and tidy it up. So I'm going to save the scene. So let's take a look here. What can we group together? Well, there's a couple of things that we can't really group together, but there are a couple of things that we can. Things like this mushroom. We double click it over here. We can probably group a lot of the stuff here into the village stuff. So that mushroom can go into village stuff. The reason I like to keep the hierarchy as tidy as possible because it can get a little bit confusing sometimes with how the game can look and how it 
you know, in the hierarchy, trying to find things can be difficult. So what I'm going to do is create a new game object. I'm going to call this one world settings. And it's things like uh, light, which can go in there, the terrain, the wind zone, uh, those kind of things can go into there. So let's take them, place them into world settings. Uh, another mushroom right there, which can go into the village stuff, which is right there. So village stuff. And player pref test. So a lot of the scripts can also go into a folder as well. So game object, create empty. World scripts. So let's have a look. What is a script object here? Uh, the exclamation mark. No, that's not, obviously. Um, health monitor, that can. Quest notice. Is that really? I think that's more of an object. So that can stay there. Notice cam is fine. Notice trigger. That should stay out because it is an actual object. So quest button manager and health monitor and global stat object. They can all go inside the world scripts, uh, the cube, what cube was that? That was gate trigger, wasn't it? So I'm just going to rename that gate trigger. Oh, that's a capital G. So at this point, um, you really should just take the time to tidy up your hierarchy. I'm not going to do too much more of it. I just wanted to quickly explain the fact that if you keep your hierarchy tidy, it's easier to find things. So that is exactly what I may do between now and the next tutorial. So again, let's save our scene. Uh, okay, last thing. Well, I, I don't think it will be the last thing in this tutorial, actually. Uh, what I'd like to do is bring in some audio. So let's go to our audio. Uh, what I'm going to do is tidy up down here as well. So this is going to be... Um, in fact, I'll just have it effects. So we'll have effects in there. And in the folder, I'm going to drag and drop these two audio sounds. You can get these on the website. Head over there, downloads and assets, uh, RPG series, and download them under tutorial number 32. So we've dealt with sound effects before. So let's quickly use these to add them to our scene. So let's start with the gate sound. And it is gate trigger that we need to go on to, I believe. Is, is it gate trigger? Let me quickly check. So let's open Quest Zero Two Start inside um, Visual Studio. So obviously we've got these two uh, sound effects we want to add in. This is just a quick way of showing you how we can add to scripts as we go along because we don't necessarily have to keep these scripts once they're written. We can add, change, modify everything as we go along. For example, we could have another script over, you know, on the Quest board where we have a sound when we take the quest from there. We could add that in at any point, really, if we wanted to. So it's a case of showing that we can change, modify, edit any type of script at any point. So uh, we have the open gate there. So we need to add in an extra variable. So public audio source, and this will be gate open semicolon so once we have opened the gate let's have gate open dot play open close bracket semicolon and save the script so obviously we then have to add those sound effects so on fps controller we have the audio objects right there so let's take the heart collect, hold control, press D to duplicate. Let's rename this as gate sound. And then let's drag and drop the creak sound onto there. And then that gate sound becomes this variable over here. So drag and drop gate sound over here. And to test this out, I'm going to turn on the gate trigger. Press play. So just imagine we've done our, our quest, you know, we've got to the point where we're about to open the gate, just quickly testing out that our sound effect does actually work. 
So also I may change the sound effect of our feet as well at some point because it just sounds a little bit unrealistic for our world at the moment. Okay, so that didn't actually work, did it? I do believe we have to actually... Right, so we may have to play through the game itself. Uh, I will do that in just a moment, but before I do, let's actually sort out our sword swing. Because we can kill two birds with one stone. So let's add in another game object there. So let's hold control, press D on gate sound. Change that to sword swing. And let's add the sword swing game object sound over there. And now we need to go to the script which allows us to swing our sword and if i recall it is on our first person character inflict damage object should be i think it's that one is it i think it's inflict damage uh it is yeah so in the inflict damage we have to go public audio source and we'll call it swing sword semicolon so obviously once we've swung the sword um, just before this if statement we can have swing sword dot play oh close bracket semicolon save so then add that variable which we just created the sword swing over here onto there save and now let's try out all of that process obviously i'm not going to go through with everything that we need to I just need to open the gate so firstly let's take that excellent I may speed through this part on the video so if it suddenly just goes very very fast you know why so obviously we have a few glitches as well probably should sort that out at some point take sword there we go so our sword sound works Perfect. And now let's talk to our NPC. Oh, no, of course, we have to actually hand it back in, don't we? Complete the quest and now talk to our NPC. Uh, we have a spider problem. Can you go outside the village, kill the spiders and their boss? Here's the key. Okay. So everything is in order so far. Okay, so the play sound didn't work on the open. Okay, so there, I've done something somewhere. So let's check everything ties back. This is a good <laughs> good uh, chance for us to have a quick debug session. Um, so we have a spider problem. Yep, here is the key. Uh, yep, so gate open dot set active true. So gate open, which is right there. Open gate object. Is that right there? And yep. Okay. So I've attached to the, uh, to the wrong one. <laughs> so instead of gate trigger, that doesn't actually need to be the one because I remember now I created that one by mistake many many tutorials ago so it's open gate object is the one we want so we just need to quickly add in that sound so public audio source gate open semicolon and just before we play the animations let's have gate open dot play oh close bracket semicolon save let's finally add that variable in and i'm not going to test it out because I, I know it will work at this point uh, so gate sound over and into there and let's turn it off again and save so next tutorial before we actually start venturing into this cave which will be a new scene and i'm looking forward to creating inside the cave because it gives us an opportunity to create something kind of different than what we've done so far but obviously still relevant to an rpg um so next tutorial what we're going to take a look at 
is probably post processing. So a quick brief overview of post processing before we finish here is a way of making all of this not look so plasticine. -y. So at the moment, some things do look pretty decent, like this rock right here. That's not too bad. But with post processing, we can make it look absolutely fantastic. So we're going to add that in. We're also going to add in a couple of other effects as well, play with the lighting. So next tour is going to be a bit of a long one, but it's going to be worthwhile. Trust me on that one. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.